Today we are here with Dr. Jonathan Kipnis from the University of Virginia. Dr. Kipnis is going to be the keynote speaker at the 2016 ISNVD conference in April. Um, Dr. Kipnis uh, will be uh, speaking about um, his new findings of the meningeal lymphatic system and um, about the importance of that system in the brain. Um, the title of his talk is Brain Drain, Meningeal Lymphatics and Neurological Disorders. Thank you again, Dr. Kepnes, for joining us. And um, would you like to go ahead and just start talking, giving us a, uh, an explanation of um, finding of the lymphatic vessel system and uh, what you think of it, the importance of that system? Well, thank you very much, Sharon. It's a pleasure to be speaking with you now, and I'm looking forward to the meeting in April where I'll meet uh, all the scientists and, 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 and colleagues and uh, really to share with them and, and hear their thoughts. Um, so every tissue in our body has two types of, of uh, um, uh, vascular supply. We have the blood vasculature that brings all the goodies into our tissues, and also immune cells are trafficking with those vessels, with the blood vessels, into tissues for patrolling and for surveillance. And then we have this, the, the other vascular system called the lymphatic system, again, in all tissues. And this tissue is responsible for eliminating or removal of the waste uh, that this tissue produces. And immune cells from the tissue are using lymphatic vessels to get out. Now, the brain is the only tissue in which lymphatic drainage has been defined as unusual because there is no lymphatic vessels in the, in the brain. And so the idea was that the, all the cellular um, um, waste that the tissue makes will be drained somehow through the cribriform plate, which is the hole in the skull that connects our brain to the nose, and through that hole it will get out into nasal mucosa and from there into the deep cervical lymph nodes, because we know one thing, if you put something in the brain, it will be drained into the deep cervical lymph nodes. But these routes that were explained just were a little bit, um, I, I want to say it mildly, did not make much sense. And so we've been working on the meninges and meningeal immunity. Meninges is the covering of the brain, between the brain and the skull. We have this layer of meninges, which are the three layers, uh, and uh, that's where the CSF flows and allows you know, the biopsy of the, of, of, of the brain and the spinal cord. And we've been looking very carefully in this area because from an immunological perspective, it's a very, very important area of the, of the brain. And many people would agree that inflammatory processes that maybe lead, uh, lead up to uh, multiple sclerosis may potentially start or initiate in the area um, of meninges. And so we've been looking in this area and what we realize is that there are some very interesting as a accumulation of immune cells in the area of the sinuses in the CNS. Sinus is the big vein into which all the blood from our brain is draining just before it goes out into the periphery. And so along those sinuses we found vessels which were not blood vessels, but they did contain immune cells and we said, okay, what this could be? If these are not blood vessels, they must be what? Um, lymphatic vessels, but lymphatic vessels should not be there. So we labeled for lymphatic markers and we realized that these are bona fide lymphatic vessels which are traveling along the main, main sinuses in the, in the meninges. And a really beautiful thing that we showed is if you put now a waste, which is labeled waste, you can, you can make a fluorescent waste, and you apply it into the brain or into the CSF, the so fluid, and then you follow after this waste removal, you see how nicely this waste is being removed through those lymphatic vessels. So therefore, they are functioning lymphatic vessels which are removing or draining the CNS and the CSF. And this is very exciting because now we have a real route through which immune cells and uh, through which um, cellular and molecular waste from the CNS can be removed. Now, why is it relevant for neurological disorders? Well, let's see. Let's assume that the drainage doesn't work. And then you have accumulation of the waste products or the waste material that the tissue makes. Now you may start getting some inflammatory responses locally to this waste. No 
you know, if you don't remove those amyloid uh, proteins, they will create, uh, they will, they will uh, accumulate plaques. And so what we believe is that maybe uh, uh, also Alzheimer's pathology also starts with those vessels. But n our number one uh, focus rate now is to understand how these vessels are controlling or affecting immune, immune system of the meninges, which then in turn basically could um, turn against uh, the CNS and attack the CNS. Okay. Um, do you find, have you found um, that there, the pathology um, of the vessel or of the system, um, are you finding that um, it is in, unique to the different disease patterns? Um, has your research gotten that far yet? Yeah, this is, this is a wonderful question. So the problem is, of course, to start looking into it, we need to develop better, better uh, um, imaging techniques. And so we're collaborating now with several, several laboratories that are working on actually patients. Some are MS patients, the NIH. We also we're also doing some of the animal work here. So this is a work in progress. Um, and uh, the changes on the vessels could be in two different two different flavors. It could be just looking different, which in, will be pretty easy to see if we see some morphological changes with those vessels. For example, they're clogged, or they're very small, or they're irregular. This will be easy to see. But uh, most probably what's happening are the more molecular changes in the, in the composition of the uh, lipidic endothelial cells, which you will not be able to see just by structure. So they may be structurally the same, but functionally impaired. Yeah, because uh, when lymphatic endothelial cell talks with the immune cell, they can talk to each other. Now the talking is mediated by uh, proteins, um, and if these proteins are not expressed well, or there is some problem in this communication, you will also see problems with the immune response. Now you will not be able to detect those changes by microscopy. Those are different techniques, and so those, of course, is, it's a little bit more difficult and takes more time. And we're we're working uh, tirelessly on, on on addressing these questions. Of course, this would be the holy grail, right, to find out what is different in, if anything, but hopefully something is different in lymphatic uh, meningeal lymphatics in, for example, MS patient versus a health individual potentially even before the first um, attack of MS uh, starts. Yes, because um, I think that uh, one of the things that uh, is becoming clearer too, or has been for some time with MS, is that, um, you know, th that many people that are uh, diagnosed later on with MS, that they probably had um, some of the disease pattern early on, um, and maybe that... Uh, you know, showing up, but they, they were not really diagnosed with MS until 20 or 30 years later. Um, so anyway, you know, some of the, the lesions um, that are indicative of demyelinating disease are showing up on the brains, but they are not, um, you know, diagnosed with MS or any right. um, disease pattern at the time. Um, you know, you talk about this uh, vessel system, and it seems to me where it is located that um, and um, I'm kind of thinking of it as being like uh, kind of like a gauzy fabric over the brain. Um, so um, what, like brain trauma, um, is that, I mean, the fragility of the system itself, it seems to me like if you get a concussion or something like that, that this may be laying um, a pattern or a pathway for later on uh, that, um, the immune system then starts to react, maybe because of certain triggers. Is this? Yeah. So, you know, we, we actually, uh, what I didn't say is we're comparing the two vascular systems. We're saying that the blood vasculature is like water pipes and the lymphatic vasculature is like sewage pipes, right? So, they take yes. all these things. Yes. So, if the sewage is not working, then yes, you know, you may have a minor problem. So, it depends. If the sewage is completely clogged, then you will have a major problem at the house, right? Um, of course, you can go you can go on without sewage much longer than without without water. Uh, so uh, that's why the second second system may be not as uh, immediate, and so it takes more time for it to dysfunction, like you said, to see the actual problem in the brain. Um, again, we should remember that. Um, I mean, everything you say are wonderful ideas, and potentially, so trauma, yeah, 
Yes, if you hit the area around those vessels, you will damage them. Uh, a very fragile system, very, very fragile vessels, but they also can very nicely regrow. Now, will they regrow exactly like they were before? Will they regrow and something wrong will happen so they will not connect very well? I don't know. So all these are beautiful ideas. We just need to, you know, to, I mean, more, more and more money and more people sure. need to, and more labs need to get into the field and start asking all these questions because I think there's many, many, many different ways through which these lymphatic, lymphatic vessels might affect the brain function and might lead to diseases, but I think it will take us uh, years to understand. Okay, um, another question uh, that came in um, from uh, one of our patients' uh, followers was um, that the immune system or the immune cells that you're finding in this vessel system, are they different or uh, are they similar to the microglia that Oh, yeah, so these are so very different. Microglia are the macrophages of the brain. They sit inside the parenchyma, right? So parenchymal macrophages. Yes. Uh, and the moment you see macrophage outside of the parenchyma, you cannot even call it microglia. So the cells are definitely different. The, cell, the beauty of the system is that the cells that you find in the meninges and around those vessels are absolutely bona fide uh, um, immune cells like you would see in any other organ. So okay, it's interesting. Like the meninges of the CNS is not different than any other tissue. Okay, interesting. Yes. Thank you for the clarification there. Yes. Um, and then um, as you look towards your research, um, are you looking at that, you know, if the system becomes damaged some way, are you looking at a um, a drug component or something like that to well so the beauty of the of the you know somebody tells me who why do somebody told me why do i mean why do we care really how does cns drain we know it goes from point a to point b and do we really care if it goes through a nose or through those vessels and i said of course we care because if we know how the drainage is happening then we can interfere with it we can maybe make those vessels larger we can grow them we can maybe make them smaller we can we can we can we can maybe uh, surgically intervene in those vessels. I mean, there is many, many, once you know the exact route of, to get from point A to point B, and if you know that this route is really important for neurological disorder, then you need to, then you can actually start looking and uh, manipulating those pathways. And of course, like I told you before, there is interactions between the lymphatic and arterial cells and the immune cells. And those interactions you potentially may augment or inhibit using different different drugs. So I do believe that this, if we prove, or hopefully I would say, when we prove without any doubt that these vessels are really affecting uh, neurological disorders, and I hope the first one will be MS, but also uh, also others. The moment we have it, then we can say, okay, let's now understand what are these vessels doing in this disease. And now let's see how can we target them therapeutically because, of course, going into a patient brains and start, you know, cleaving, uh, um, uh, um, ablating them, this is not, I don't see it happening. Again, I should, I should, I should mention, I'm not a, an MD, right? I'm a mouse doctor, so we can do many, many things in mice, which we cannot do in humans. Often. Yes. But uh, I think once you understand what these vessels are doing, so step number one, do they really, are they really involved in MS? If the answer is hopefully yes, then the question number two is what exactly are they doing? Is it purely removal of the, of the uh, waste? Is it interaction with the immune system? Is it uh, both or something else or combination of any of those? Once we know the mechanisms, then we can say now how can we manipulate those with pharmacological drugs, with, 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 with biological material, biological drugs, maybe it could be cellular therapy or any of these sorts. I mean, like I said, it will take, I think, years for us to be able to understand and manipulate the system for the benefit, but I'm very hopeful. Well, it's interesting research, and I think that um, any of the publications that I've seen, um, you know, reporting on your research that they say um, that there's going to have to be a lot of textbooks rewritten uh, because of your findings. So, um, interesting. Um, I'm going to, I think we can close off now. You've um, explained quite um, well, I hope, um, for our patient audience. And thank you very much. And I look forward to seeing you in April at the ISNVD. Thank you very much, Sharon. I'll see you there soon. Okay. Thank you.